So what we'll do is um for this week, we'll we'll do this topic 2.2 today and tomorrow. But I'm using Jamboard, not slides, because I want to chanting. And you know by now if I try to chanting on Google Slides, W one. So that's why I, I'm showing um <laughs> Jamboard right now. So let's look at atmospheric pressure concept. Okay, uh before we go into what is atmospheric pressure, okay? Did any of you try this? Uh? Or maybe you um have you have you any of you tried this or have you seen this before in you know when you were learning science in lower secondary? Seen, yep. Seen it. Did you okay, so you saw it, right? Could you replicate it? Were you able to do this on your own as well? Just asking. No. Actually you can try, but maybe not now lah. <laughs> It's very super easy and uh, super easy to do actually. Um, but anyway, since uh, I know you definitely have learned it before, it's just that when I put it up in the activity, it's it's for for those who maybe like like forgot or curious to see whether it really works or not. Okay, so never mind. Uh, no need to. This is not the focus though. This is not the main thing for point five. Um, but okay, you've seen this before. How do we explain what happened? How come uh, the the like like wow like magic like that? Whoa, the cup stay up there. How come ah uh, uh, how come uh, the cup can stay when the the water didn't come like gushing out of the cup and then everything get wet? Oh yeah. Pressure in cup is less than atmospheric pressure. Uh, atmospheric pressure, push the card. Stagnant air has pressure. Okay, so yes, it's a re, 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 what do you call um in terms of the the explanation, it is something to do with atmospheric pressure. It is. So you've learned before that, oops, sorry, atmospheric pressure. X in all directions, right? So that's so we know atmospheric pressure does press down, but also but it's also uh, acting upwards, sides and all that. Yeah, so you're right. The those of you who have written, yeah. So from outside the pressure pushed up, inside does have pressure, correct? But atmospheric pressure is greater than the air, the air pressure plus water pressure inside. So normally we try to minimize the air that's inside. So actually, I think here you can see water level by right. This one should be full of water. When it's completely full of water, it works the best. So yes, the answer is due to atmospheric pressure. I'm just going to write short form here, atmospheric pressure. So what you're going to learn in this chapter is obviously not something so simple. Uh, you're going to have to learn how to calculate atmospheric pressure. Okay, which leads us to uh, this top. Now, this is not in your textbook. Okay, but if you suck a straw immersed in a liquid, how does the liquid go up the straw? Okay, I know nowadays uh we're trying not to use straw, we call paper straw la ha. But how come uh? Okay, like, let's say like you you're a monkey. Okay, no la <laughs> you're not a monkey. But there's this monkey. Some a monkey wants to suck the uh, liquid up the straw. So how does the straw work? How is it when you suck, right? The liquid can go up the straw. So if the atmospheric pressure will push the liquid up the straw. So what happens is if you have a straw, oh, I cannot see. If let's say you have a straw. That you put into a li uh, liquid, right? The atmospheric pressure will push up the liquid in the straw. But what's happening inside the straw? What's happening inside the straw? How is it that the atmospheric pressure can push the liquid up the straw? What's what's going on when we suck the air out? What what happens inside the straw? Pressure in cup lesser, so low air pressure. Correct. When you suck the air out, that reduces the air inside the straw. By the way, this is a straw. Let me label here for you. Straw. And this is the cup of water or cup or the Coca-Cola that the monkey is holding. That might write water, okay? So what happens is we suck out and then it. what happens is less air pressure. Less air pressure, higher pressure outside, atmospheric pressure pushes the water to go up the straw. Easy, right? Ah, uh, sounds so easy. Some people before already one. By the way, uh, just to let you know. Uh, sometimes when you suck air out from inside a container, right? Uh, it if there's if you have removed all air, 
it becomes a vacuum inside. If you have sucked out some air, there's still air inside, just that the pressure becomes lower than outside. Sometimes we call that partial vacuum. So just to let you know, uh, physics students, if you come across this term, partial vacuum, partial vacuum means that it's not a full vacuum. Full vacuum means there's absolutely no air pressure, right? Because no air particles inside. Partial vacuum is a situation where, let's say you have a closed container, where inside the air pressure is less than outside. Air pressure. So I put there lower air pressure. Okay, I hope you can read my thing. Lower air pressure inside compared to outside. We can actually, we actually call this uh, situation partial vacuum because it's almost like a vacuum, but not a full vacuum. So if you can understand this, then you will be able to understand what we're supposed to be learning over here. Um, you see these two on this uh, slightly different pictures. Lah. These two um, items here, they're known as barometers. A barometer is a device uh, that is used to measure atmospheric pressure. Barometer. Sound sound a bit like correct English lah. Hana barometer, right? Barometer. Macam wah, je wah. English so fantastic. So barometer. So barometer is the name of the device that's used to measure atmospheric pressure. You know, like it's quite similar to how we have thermometers. Thermometers are used to measure temperature, right? And you have many different types of thermometers. Yeah, you have mercury thermometer. You have the infrared thermometer, like the one nowadays. I want titi titi. You know, when you go to the shops or go to school, ah, ah, titi. Ah, I want infrared. Okay. But uh, before that, we had the mercury, we had digital thermometers. So digital thermometers are, is like the one you still have to put inside your mouth or inside your ear. But it comes up with the numbers, digital numbers. Those are digital thermometers. <coughs> Those are based on resistance, actually. Resistant thermometers. So anyway, um, so thermometers are thermal uh, measuring instruments. <coughs> so used to measure heat or temperature. So barometers are used to measure atmospheric pressure. These are the two different types. This is known as a mercury barometer. This is known as an aneroid barometer. They're just different types, and we will cover both. Okay, so now we come to a blank space because I'm going to be drawing stuff here. Now I will share the link. Initially, I didn't want to share the link because I wanted you guys to be um, to follow me together. Together, I just realized that asked me a question. But what happens when container is closed? Excellent question, which is going to uh, help uh, lead to this explanation. So, what happens when the container is uh, closed? You mean, you mean for the straw? Is it by the way? Partial vacuum just means the air pressure inside is less than outside. Like if you, um, let's say like you you take a box, or not box lah, like a how to say? Okay, like let's say we we get a container. Let's say a fixed volume. Let's say like a tin can kind of concept. Then what happens is uh. Let's say it's very, very, very rigid. Then what happens is we pump the air out, pump the air out. Then we, then like let's say here's the, the open hole lah. We pump the air out. So then suddenly inside it become less pressure. Now most tin cans of course will collapse inside. Let's say this one is so rigid it won't collapse. So if you if you pump the air out, then there's less air pressure. Then we we, we seal back. So in the the wall is so rigid that it cannot collapse. But inside now it's less air pressure than outside. Then the situation here is a partial vacuum. Does that make sense? If we can understand what's happening in the straw here, let me now create another slide. So if you if you want to come into the jam board, you can come to slide number seven. Otherwise, you can stay on Google Meet. That's fine. So if you can understand what's happening with the straw, let me draw again, like what Naomi uh, asked. If you suck the air out of the straw, you get a partial vacuum inside the straw. So what happens is atmospheric pressure, which is is greater than the inside of the straw, presses on the surface of the water. What happens? The water will go up. So th this is the principle on which the mercury barometer, also known as a fourteen barometer, works on. Fourteen is someone's name lah, because you know whenever you invent something, you must make sure 
to name it after yourself. So that everyone knows, oh, this is the person who invented it, right? Or you come with a principle of a law, must name it after yourself. How did that? Everyone knows, oh, this is the person who came up with the name of the principle of the law. You know, like Hooke's law, huh? like Newton's law, okay? Einstein's law of mass conservation, all right? All that you must name after yourself, okay? So make sure you put your name so that everyone knows, oh, this is the fellow la, who came up with this thing. That's why all the units, la, Newton, la, Pascal, la, Joel's, la, all these fellas all contributed. So to recognize your contribution, we put their name. So make sure you put the name. But anyway, uh, nowadays we don't call it fortune barometer. We tend to call this mercury barometer. Why? Because got mercury inside, like duh, right? So how mercury barometer works is this. So if you can understand this partial vacuum concept, the mercury barometer works the same way. So now we have a uh, reservoir. So reservoir basically just means uh, like, a container or a tank which contains the excess liquid so we fill this up with the mercury so we know mercury um, the meniscus is this way right remember for mercury okay now if you get a closed tube this time we're not going to be sucking stuff in our mercury and suck into your body and then you know, just get poisoned and die don't do, we all don't be, we don't be stupid we don't do stupid things okay because we are smart science students so now if we put um let's say a tube a vacuum tube inside now. Remove this. So let's say it's a glass tube. Not say let's say it is a glass tube. Glass tube, but inside now is a vacuum. So now it's not partial vacuum, huh? full vacuum. Full vacuum now. We put it right, open end, put into the mercury here. So this is the mercury uh, reservoir, right? So this the reservoir is the container, lah. Okay. The mercury is the liquid that's inside the reservoir. What do you think is going to happen inside this glass tube? What do you think is going to happen to the? I mean, like, what's the what's going to do? Well, the glass tube not going to explode, lah. Okay, the glass tube very very strong one. So the mercury, what's going to happen to the mercury in the glass tube? Yeah. So what happens is the atmospheric pressure will press on the surface of the mercury. And like the straw concept, the mercury is going to rise up. So yes, the mercury is going to go up. Uh, whoops, sorry. Let me put yeah, this color. So it's going to go up. But the thing is, when the mercury goes up, right, it doesn't go up all the way to the top of the tube. It will only rise to a certain level. So of course, it depends. It does depend, yes, on the height of the glass tube. But um. If the glass tube, you can put a very high, very high, very tall glass tube, but you will find at to a certain point, the mercury will stop at a certain level. Then no matter how tall the glass tube is, the mercury will still stop only at a certain level. Okay. If it's lower than, the glass tube is lower height than that, that level, then of course fill up the whole thing. But you put higher, like, eh, how come uh, cannot fill up the rest of the I thought vacuum, but you fill up with the whole thing. No. Because... Atmospheric pressure has a maximum value. Like when we did the earlier questions, you remember they got um the questions got right down, ma. Sorry, excuse me. Atmospheric pressure is given as a hundred kPa, hundred kilopascal. That is a fixed value for atmospheric pressure. So that means uh, the atmospheric pressure there's only a certain value, ma. It so what happens is atmospheric pressure will press the mercury to go up until the mercury achieves the same pressure as that value of 100 kilopascal. And then, to, to, for, to, again, to understand, huh, how come, uh, why, why got things like that? What nonsense is this about? Let's come back to the concept of the YouTube. So I'm going to draw a small sketch over here, and we're going to relate it to this situation. Okay? So you remember how I mentioned that in the YouTube, you put the same liquid, right? In the same, what happens is the same liquid will come up to the same level because the liquid is trying to achieve pressure equilibrium. So the levels will go up to such a way that the pressure on both sides will be the same. Remember this? Remember this? Just not if you remember. I can see your face. Okay. So remember how when we put a different liquid on one arm? Then the level changes. The level change not to Kahati change. The level change why? Also to achieve pressure equilibrium. So if let's say you put oil on one side, what happened was 
the level will adjust until we get pressure equilibrium. That means pressure here until here, these two points will have the same pressure. So when we come back to this glass tube in the mercury thing, what happens now is the mercury has filled up the glass tube, but not all the way up. There's a certain level. Why? Because mercury, which is a liquid, also exerts pressure. So mercury has pressure. We know that mercury, which is a liquid, formula is HOG. Mercury pressure presses downwards. Now, the remember like this water here. On top of the water, inside the water, pressure, same level, same. Mercury here also will be same. On top here is mercury, inside is mercury. Pressure inside and outside at the same level will be the same. So let's say I'll mark this as point A. Inside is point B, inside is point C. Pressure at the same level, A, B, C, all same pressure. Which means A and C, they're open to the atmosphere, right? Pressure acting on A and C is because of the atmosphere. Again, uh, A and C is the atmosphere. B is caused by what? Vacuum plus mercury. When vacuum no pressure, uh, vacuum is zero. So B is caused by what? The mercury only. Uh, let me go here for you. This is the mercury pressure. You can see the the the, um, how to explain? Can you, can you see what I'm, I'm trying to, to show you here? Okay, so why is there a maximum level? Because the atmospheric pressure has a fixed value 100,000 pascals. The mercury will rise up until it exerts the pressure exerted by this entire length of mercury is equal to the atmospheric pressure. It cannot go up since so shocks and really go up high, high level until like until you reach the sky. Cannot because there is only a certain value which the atmospheric pressure can push up. That's why there's a, there's a certain level only where it stops at. Uh, if you want to do like uh, comparisons, right? Uh, you we in that sense, especially you want to to solve problems. Uh, you for physics, we always try to look for. The levels where it can give us the same value, so same level, same pressure on top. No, because if you take the 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 one on top here, you see the cross I draw over here, right? This cross here is the 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 pressure contributed to this point is not nothing to do with the mercury because it's sitting on top of the mercury. So the pressure on top of this point is caused by the air pressure inside the glass tube. But if inside is a vacuum, means that the pressure is. Zero. So there's no pressure acting on the surface. I'll, I'll explain how to, what's all this H and how to solve that. I'll explain all that uh, up to this point. Okay. Never mind. Let me go to the next one first. I'm going to go to slide number eight. I'm going to slide number eight so that um, there's space to draw stuff. Okay. So uh, with regards to that H that uh, we were, that, that we, we saw, right? So I'm going to redraw the barometer now. Okay. Imagine it's straight. Okay. I know it's not straight. Imagine it's straight. Okay, so let's say we've got the mercury. This is the glass tube, right? Uh, this is the mercury uh, reservoir inside. Eh, mercury, reservoir. mercury inside, glass tube, vacuum. So, um, what happens is that at the, the atmospheric pressure at sea level is kind of the same all over the world. Um, you should know uh, by now that um, if, you, if you change altitudes, the atmospheric pressure changes, right? Like if you climb higher, the atmospheric pressure is lower when you go under the sea. Atmospheric, I mean, the pressure of course increases. So there are certain uh, places in the world where the land right is below sea level. It's not under the sea; it's just below sea level. So the atmospheric pressure is actually greater at those positions. You know what it means, by the way, when I say sea level. Okay. Of course, I'm not. So I'm just gonna take that. Okay. So, you see what happens is uh, when they give us atmospheric pressure at 100 kilopascal, this is about the, this is like uh, the value, kind of the standard value at atmosphere, uh, what called at sea level. The value of atmospheric pressure can change actually depending on the weather. It can, but most of the time it's around 100 kilopascal. So, that's why we don't look at the small, small change. Small change also is very insignificant. 
it's always around this value anyway. 100 point, maybe it'll change to 100, 100 point 1, uh, 100, like I said, 100 point 1 kPa, 100.15 kPa, like the difference is so small, we don't bother so much. So what happens is we find that if you use a mercury barometer, we always find right, that the mercury goes up and you measure, right, it comes up to 766 millimeters. So wherever you go, like let's say like you have a barometer you use in, let's say KL, then you bring it to your house, then you go to, let's say you go and visit your, your, your folks at, uh, you know, like Kampong, go, so you go like Pinenka, Kedaka, then you check, hey, roughly the same, or it's always 760 mm. Then you try, let's, let's see, like, hey, those, those fillers in Thailand are not the same or not, or you see, ask your friends in Norway, US, all of them, uh, you'll find uh, the value of uh, the mercury height tends to be around this number, 760. It can change. 759, 758, 763, but always around this value. So because this is the average value, uh, we tend uh, we find that it's always around this number. So we found that it's, uh, it's another way to express atmospheric pressure is to use it based on this number. Because let's say, let's say you look at the barometer today, 760, then tomorrow, eh, drop a bit, 759. So it's easier to process 759, 760. You can see the change because you can see you know, if you put a, a meter rule here, imagine it's a meter rule, okay? You can actually see the level changing easily. Uh, this is not a hairy object. I write meter rule, okay? I write here meter rule, okay? Ah. So because um, the number can be, uh, you know, is based ar you know, uh, around this value, another way to express the value of atmospheric pressure is to use this number. That means you will see it's in your book, huh? They write it as 760 mm Hg. Hg is the chemical symbol for mercury. I think you've all learned this in chemistry, right? Okay, if you haven't learned, never mind now. <laughs> Hg, I can't remember the Latin name. Hg is mercury. So 760 mm Hg means what? 760 millimeters height of mercury Hg. So when they write this way, just to let you know, kPa is the uh, unit for pressure. Pascal, not K. Pascal is the SI unit for pressure. kPa is A unit of pressure. MMHG is also a unit for pressure. So it's a little bit new. If you've never done, seen it before, you're like, it's a bit confusing. How it works is this. MM means the millimeter height. Hg is the uh, liquid. So together, you cannot say mm, mm by itself is not unit for pressure. Hg by itself is not unit for pressure, right? Because mm is length, ma. Hg is the type of liquid, ma. But combined together, this is actually a unit for pressure because it means atmospheric pressure is equivalent to 760 millimeters height, 700 millimeters mercury pressing down. Is atmospheric pressure is equal to 700 millimeters of mercury, as shown in the barometer. Um, I'll, I'll go on and on and explain. Uh, let me go on a little bit because if I hover around this, um, it's still not going to be very clear. Um, uh, let me also show you. Right. Uh, by the way, okay, you, if you had to convert this, actually, yeah, uh, this mmHg you can convert to Pascal. You know how you use the formula. P equals H or G. How to use H or G? Because this is mercury. When you measure the height, right? You measure the height from the surface inside the glass tube, not the whole glass tube. Huh? This surface to this point. Not to the bottom also. Huh? It's from surface to surface because that's the difference in height. So if you have to convert this mmHg into Pascal, the H is 760 mm. So obviously we don't put 760. You have to write it in SI unit, which is 0 0.76 meters. The rho is the density of mercury. Now, density of mercury, uh, what's your textbook value? I know the value is 13,600. You book by the same thing. No, they do not because it depends. <laughs> okay, got 1.36 at the power of 4. 13,600. That's my tablet. 13, uh, okay, I write the number 1.36 times 10 power of 4 kilogram per meter cube. 
this is density of mercury. Mercury has uh, one of the greatest densities. Uh, oh, it's, it's, a, it's a liquid with one of the greatest densities at room temperature, right? Because it's a metal, ma. So what you do is you see, oh, density of mercury of one point three six times the power of four, and we know that the height is uh, 760, uh, 760 mm. If you convert it, okay, this is the value times nine point eight one meters per second squared. So I like to write the units in here. It's a habit la, uh, because it this when I write the units inside, it reminds us that we need to write it in SI unit. So when you work it out, I'm just gonna count. Actually, I want you to count. My you guys count for me. You're very pandai calculator. Can you can you count for me? So it's one zero one three nine six point one six Pascal. This is the value. In Pascal, or seven hundred sixteen milliliters of mercury. Now I know it's not exactly hundred kPa. Like, huh, teacher, this is one zero one point three. Never mind. Like I said, they always say the average value because the number does change from, um, you know, depending on the weather, depends on the locality of the place, right? But it's it will hover around this number, around hundred something kilo Pascal. Right? Okay, so this is how we convert the value of the mercury into pascal now so so coming back here that means right this is why it comes up to about 760 so if you can understand how this formula works so yes your maths does have to be uh, rather solid but it's not that difficult to understand given the atmospheric pressure is you know like it's dependent now on the environment right so rho or the the the, the, the mercury is fixed so what happens is the height will adjust to match the pressure. So just remember, the density of mercury is fixed. G is also fixed. So the atmospheric pressure is at 100,000 pascals, right? What happens is when it exerts the pressure on the surface, the mercury will rise up until it gets this height in order to balance the pressure exerted by the atmosphere. Can you guys understand how the barometer works? So the barometer works just like a straw because inside the vacuum, the atmosphere will press on the mercury until it goes up to a maximum height where that height exerted, right, will be equal to the atmospheric pressure. I'm not going on to aneroid yet. Uh, I'm aware that we have only a few minutes left, but I want to finish up this um, 14 barometer thing. So why we use mercury? is because mercury is one of the densest liquids at room temperature. If you want to use other liquids, also can. You want to use water, also can. In theory, you all you guys, all of us, can also build water barometers. But it's very difficult because, I mean, okay, I draw one more. Let's go to slide. Oh, none of you are Jack Boy. Never mind. I'm going to slide number nine. Okay, it's like this. Um, if you want to try to fill up a water barometer, like I said, actually can. If you want to do, can we can make it into a big class project? But then you'll find that ah, my you know, like I spent three weeks of this on my you know, of my life on this, and then it gives me no benefit for SPM for what, right? So um, let me explain to you why. But if you really want, we can it's just uh, not worth it lah. So you don't have to use a glass tube, actually. You can actually use any tube that is uh, airtight. That means as long as it's not porous, so air can't come in. Lah, huh? So it's uh, airtight. Then you fill it with uh, water. But the problem is trying to get a vacuum tube. So if you use water, same thing will happen uh, as the mercury. Atmospheric pressure will also press on the surface of water. Yes, water will go up. Yes, water will go up to the high maximum level. Yes, it will. Exactly the same. Problem is the height. Why? Because density of water. How much is density of water? Do you all know? Do you remember? Thousand question mark? Ah, thousand. Yes, correct. Only question mark. You are correct, Matthew. <laughs> so it's a thousand kilograms per meter cube. Now we already know that atmospheric pressure is like um rounded off hundred thousand. Like actually more or less la one oh one point something whatever. Now my if I I just get as a thousand. First la, huh? just just to round up to make it easier for the calculation. Okay, so it's a hundred thousand pascal, let's say. 
So if you want to find out the height that the water will push up to, how to find out? We use the formula people's HOG because water, ma. So remember, like uh, uh the, the question, just how the calculation was for what? Was it uh, mercury or atmospheric pressure? It's both. So the same thing will happen in this case. The water pressure exerted by H and atmospheric pressure will be the same. So that means outside the atmospheric pressure will be equal to the water pressure exerted by the height. And what we're looking for is the height now. So given that we know atmospheric pressure is 100,000, we put this value inside here. 100,000 equals to unknown H. Density of water is 1,000. G is 9.81. So now you count for me how much is H. Come, you're all very calculator. Come. 10.19, Okay, 10.19. This. Okay, you can round up to 10.19, it's fine. Do you know how tall 10.19 10 this is? Do you know how high it is? Very high, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, depending on, because last time, I think now they change um, the height. Last time, right, um, one story, one room height is 3 meters. I think nowadays they change it, maybe it's about 4 meters. But generally, it's between 2 to 3 stories height. So for our school one, would maybe be about under two, uh, about 2 stories lah, because our room height is very high. So imagine lah, you want to take a reading with the water barometer. Oh. You need to take a ladder and climb up. And then you take the reading. So yeah, it's like like taller than than your classroom, man. You gotta climb up to the next classroom and then you take the reading. Possible but difficult. So that's why we don't use water barometers. Okay. So this kind of uh, barometer does exist in certain labs. They're known as water barometers. But just to let you know, you know how like just now we saw um, uh, just now I wrote here, right, in, on slide number 8, I wrote 760 mmHg, and I said this is a unit for pressure. Actually, you can also write meters of water, you know. That means you can, oh, 10.1937, you can actually write pressure as 10.1937 meters water. This mH2O is also a unit for pressure because you mentioned the, the height and the type of liquid. So, why is this accepted? Because the height, meters, per millimeters, that's how tall, or rather how, how great the depth of the, the liquid is. And then the type of liquid is very, very specific. Because if you use like HG, HG is mercury. Mercury has a fixed density, ma, about 13,600 kilo, kilograms per meter cube. Water lead also a fixed density of 1,000 kilograms per meter cube. So anyone who's good at physics, you learn this before, you take one look, you know, oh, meters of water. You can already visualize water is a thousand kg per meter cube. Then you already can see ten meters of water barometer. Mercury also say mercury we know is density thirteen thousand six hundred kilograms per meter cube, and then seven hundred sixty millimeters. Uh, we can already uh, visualize. So the, you so this kind of um method right of writing the units are accepted for liquids where the densities are fixed. So you cannot have liquids where the density can change. Right, like salt water cannot. So there's no such thing as, oh, 10.19 meter salt water, don't have. Oil also got different kinds of oil, ma, olive oil, sunflower oil, castor oil, uh, the, the, the hydraulic oil, okay, so many different kinds of oils. And because there's so many different kinds of oil, different density, also not accepted. So we don't have something like 10 meters oil, no such thing, because oil has changing densities. This kind of unit is accepted only for liquids where the densities are known and fixed. Uh, that's that's what I read when I wrote that MMHG meters uh, H2O. You see under page on page uh, fifty two unit of the unit pressure there. That's the different units. I didn't cover millibar yet. Uh, millibar is uh is written if you check out your textbook. It is written there lah. Um, one millibar is equals to one hectopascal. H is uh, hecto or hecta? hecto hecto pascal. Yeah. The millibar, uh, we won't we won't really use it lah. It's a bit outdated. Um. Because, again, okay, why bar? What is this bar? You, oh my god, it's time already for your next class, sorry. Uh, okay, but you remember why when I said barometer, right? Barometer, the term bar is actually a unit for pressure. It's a unit for pressure. So you know how in chemistry, you learn 1 ATM? 
ATM is a unit for pressure also, right? One ATM means what? Um, the one ATM is equal to the pressure of the atmosphere at sea level, correct? One ATM is actually the same as one bar. The old way they used to 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 express the unit um, is bar. So one bar is actually the same as one ATM. But um, nowadays they want to change everything to SI unit. They stop using bar because bar is under imperial system. They consider it imperial, but they change it now to ATM. Just so that you know, lah. Thank you.